right, Ooh, I'll whisper. Janet Wilson, SPPRC. Did you guys hear about the mother who went across the hall to wake her daughter up for church? Honey, honey, time to get up for church. And the daughter rolls over and faces the wall. I don't want to go. And the mother says, for heaven's sake, why not? She goes, well, for one thing, nobody likes me. And for the other, the sermons are so long and boring. And the mother said, honey, you get up right now. You're 62 years old, and you're the pastor of that church. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Well, that starts our holy humor. Hallelujah. I am... Um, <laughs> mistakenly chewed up my um, my service thing here, so I I don't have any account of what's going on, so I think we'd better have somebody draw. So who knows what we'll be doing and when we'll be doing it. But um, I get to come down here, and it's a birthday girl, and she gets to pick out the first thing that we're going to do is Well, we, we've already had the announcements, yes? Does anybody have a joke that they want to share? Yes? Okay, um, I need a mic. Well, or unless I come to you. You No, no, here. You. Why do cows have bells around their neck? Their horns don't work. Oh, <laughs> very good, very good. All right. Um, so, it was announcements. You're close. Oh, I have to read it. Well, we are going to do the doxology right now. So, all everybody stand. Marilyn, are you ready for our doxology? You should pull one of these out. We're going to do a hymn number, He is Lord. We're going to do it twice, and it is found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 177. If not on the board, or on the...
Um, anybody have a joke? So it's time for your joke telling right here. Another April birthday. Well, I know that says welcome, but on this side, side it says, hmm, greeting. Well, we've kind of done that, haven't we? Um, it's on the screen. Let's do our greeting. Um, I keep forgetting what parts are which parts. That's me. Okay, that's you. Hallelujah. But I have a joke. Okay, let's do it. A man and his wife and his mother-in-law went on vacation to the Holy Land. They were seeing all the sights over there. They went to Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and the Nile River. But unfortunately, the mother-in-law had a massive heart attack and died. So the husband was sitting down with the funeral director, trying to decide what to do for a service. And the funeral director says, well, for about $1,000, we could have the service here. You could have your mother-in-law buried here in the Holy Land. Or for about $6,000, we could send her body back to the States, and you could have the funeral there. He thought for a minute, and he says, I think I'll have her sent back to the States, and we'll have the service there. The funeral director looked a little surprised. He says, I'm kind of surprised you have a chance to bury your mother-in-law in one of the holiest places on the planet. Why would you send her back over there? He said, well, about 2,000 years ago, you guys buried a person over here, and three days later, he rose from the grave. So I don't want to take that chance. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> Okay, so we'll start with the greeting. I'll read the little words, and you guys can read the big words. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. All right. I guess that's it. This was easy, wasn't it? So far. All right. Um, anybody else have April birthdays? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Marcia. Good, good. Oh. You draw prayers for the people. All right. We're going to do, we're going to open up for prayers for the people. Um, anyone have a joke before we go into that? So that it gives our technicians time to get there? Oh, they're there. You can still tell the joke. All right. Are there prayers of thanksgiving? Please don't tell me that you cannot have prayers of thanksgiving until the pastor uh, preaches. That just seems wrong. of Thanksgiving. Well, you know, this is what I heard. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. Amen. Generous God. Perhaps you love. Amen. In fact, I would like to announce that I, it comes to me secondhand. I was not here, but from what I understand, there were a bunch of people in my front yard uh, on Friday all praying. They were on their hands and knees praying. And um, and, and, the, and what they brought forth was amazing because I've heard of fairy dust, but at Dyser United Methodist Church's Parsonage, the fairies deliver big things of mulch. And they're all over the yard. So, I mean, if you guys need, need some serious prayer for your yard and for mulching, I suggest you get a hold of those people that were in my front yard because they did an amazing job. Generous God. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Amen. Happy for the sunshine after yesterday. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the snow is gone. We had a little frost, but it's good. I hope that the robins have had enough. Generous God. And are there prayers of concern? We're a fairly healthy bunch, are we? Okay. 
Julie Cardi has or had thyroid cancer. Her thyroid was removed on Tuesday. Jenner Scott. Yeah. I'm speaking at a district conference thing at 2.30 today, and I, um, I think that that is a, a prayer of concern. Uh, generous God. I think the attendees will need prayer, yes. Um, amen. Well, as we have no other concerns, I ask that the Lord would meet us in this silence. Father, Sundays like this remind us that we can find humor, that things don't always go as we think they should, and is evidenced by snow on April 28th. But also, Lord, things don't always go the way we think they should. When we offer up special prayers for those that are, are in need, those that were mentioned and those that were not, because we know sometimes, Lord, that it is hard to bring out our concerns. It is hard to express them when they are so deep-seated. But we do lift up Julie, and we lift up one another. Because somewhere, somehow, we have shared this, this thread that makes us a community, that makes us Dyser United Methodist Church, that extends out past these doors, to all that, all that we have come to know. And Lord, I ask that you would continue to pour out your spirit this day to remind us that we are able to touch those that are close to us, like family and friends and our community, but also the world that is at our fingertips. We ask this in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. I know you were thinking I was going to end that with the Lord's Prayer, but I didn't, and you get to pull. Be nice. Right. Oh, it's the sermon part I didn't want to have to do. Um, what now? Thank you, yes. All right. I think I need to start with a joke, don't you? And light. Um, thank you. Hallelujah. Let there be light. All right. A frog walks into a bank. And he um, goes up to the teller. Her name is Patricia Wack. And he says, Miss Wack, I would like to take out a loan. And she goes, well, what do you want to buy? And he goes, a yacht. And she goes, a yacht? Well, you'd need collateral. And he reaches into his little vest pocket, and he pulls out this little porcelain poodle. And he sets it up on the counter, and he says, that's my collateral. And she said, well, what's it worth? And she said, and he goes, well, it's worth a lot to me. And she goes, well, I think you still need to fill out this loan form, and we'll talk. And so we'll go ahead and talk to the loan officer after you're done. And so he fills it out, and... Um, he takes it back to her and she says, Kermit Jagger, that's your name? And he goes, yeah, Kermit Jagger. And she goes, okay, let's, Mr. Jagger, let's go in and talk to the loan officer. So she hands the loan officer the, the, 
the form, and he looks at it and reads through it, and, and she goes, he wants to buy a yacht, and all the collateral he has is this thing, this porcelain poodle. What is it? And he goes, well, that's a knick-knack, Paddywhack. Give the frog a loan. His old man is a rolling stone. All right. <laughs> The only decisions I had to make today was which joke I was going to tell, and that was the one I thought was the cleanest. So there's been a long time notion that Jesus never laughed. Oh, we know he wept. He wept at the grave of a friend. He wept when he looked across Jerusalem as he realizes that all of Jerusalem has rejected him. Rejection is a good reason to weep. It's a very human response to a very human situation, just as funerals are lost and losses are. Those are times when we would normally do that because we are human. And we know that he wept when wrestling with God over his time being fulfilled in the Garden of Gethsemane, so much so that his tears were mixed with blood, a good sign of dehydration. And then there is the history of the paintings of Jesus, solemn, always somber, almost looking pain-filled, that Jesus. I like the one that we have hanging just inside the entry because he's actually smiling, almost in a laugh. And I like that because that's the kind of Jesus I want to have. But this Jesus, who is like us, well, he laughed too. We know that he was fully human and fully divine. Remember that. I'll bring that up a lot. And there are very few humans who do not laugh. And in fact, if you do not laugh at some given time, you might need to be talking to a mental health person because it is normal to laugh. So therefore, we know that Jesus laughed. This is the kind of man people and children were drawn to. And we know that children are seldom drawn to curmudgeons. Right? And Luke 7.34 says that he was a glutton and a wine-bibber and a friend to tax collectors and sinners. Well, hello, there are a lot of funny stories told in those situations. Jesus was a well-rounded, magnetic person. When something really crazy happens to you, and maybe this has happened to you, you know, something that you just cannot explain and there's a level of craziness to it, have you ever felt or said, God must be laughing right now. I know I have when I've had those moments. You know, I have when, when I, we, were, we did Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, we were doing a jail ministry. And it's an incredible thing when you do jail ministry because you don't just minister to the person in jail, but you end up ministering to their family as well. And these families were very, you know, they were hurting families, very needing families. And, and what do we do when, when we want to minister to people? Well, we feed them. And they were hungry families. And we ran out of groceries. And I remember one day um, I made pancakes because you could, I could constitute them with water. And my kids had iced tea for breakfast. Not exactly, you know... Betty Crocker looking kind of meal there. You know, I'm thinking Martha Stewart would be pretty not happy with me. And so, that, but that's all I had left. Nothing else in, in my cupboards, literally. And so, by noon, I, I started praying. By noon, I got, a phone, I got a knock on the door. And it was an old neighbor that, who had really kind of not gotten along with me, well, with my ex-husband. Anyhow, all, he said, I don't know why, but I'm, I feel like God told me to bring you groceries. And so he brought me groceries. And, and I, of course, I thanked him. And he said, and, and I have a job. If, if, you, if your husband wants to work for me, I have a job for him. And you could tell it was painting him to have to say this. But he said, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. And so he took the job. And as 
I'm putting my groceries, the doorbell rings again, and I go to the door, and it's my pastor, and he says, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm supposed to bring you groceries. And we open up his big old Buick trunk, and it's full of groceries. By the end of the day, I had groceries stacked in my laundry room. They just kept coming. I think that that is, that's God's humor. I think it's those times when I'm smiling and laughing at the ridiculousness of, of that prayer coming in and how it's not just what I needed, it was more than I needed. And I think that's a good idea of how, how God looks at, our, at humor when he just does things to an extreme. And the very fact that we humans have a sense of humor indicates that God does, too. For we, we are miraculously, incredibly made in his image. And I think another thing that is, you know, affirms that God has a sense of humor is penguins, platypuses, and puppies. I think that that is, that's a good humor. Jesus, as Son of God, shares father's, the Father's attributes, and of course that would be his sense of humor. To say that Jesus never expressed joy through laughter is akin to denying his full humanity. And then there is his speech in parables. A log in someone else's eye? Oh, come on. You know, obviously they're not going to pay any attention to what the, the little moat that's in their neighbor's eye because they'd be trying to get that big log out of theirs. They wouldn't be able to see in for themselves. Or that poor camel that has to go through the eye of that needle. Oh, come on. You know, and if, even if you think it's just a gate, if you've ever seen the, the needle gate, when a camel tries to go through it, it gets down on its knees and off hobbles the, the person who's riding it. I mean, that in itself would be humor. Hard to keep a straight face. And we want a, want a grown-up Jesus who is all about, you know, I don't know why we want that grown-up Jesus who's all about dying and, and pain and, and all that. I mean, that just does not, it's not about the living that we're about. Because I like that Sermon on the Mount, too, with the fishes. Oh, come on. Do you not think that he just had a big smile on his face as the disciples are keep gathering more and more crumbs? You know, from... Five loaves and two fishes, that's some pretty crazy stuff. I know I would have. And that beatitude, who being blessed is not happy. Well, there are a few exceptions. When you have too many cucumbers or too many tomatoes, that's a blessing, but it does get to be a problem. Or when your dog of no pedigree has 12 puppies, that can be kind of a blessing that's a problem. But some translations say of the Beatitudes, happy is he who is poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And happy are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted, and so on. Jesus had a serious mission to accomplish in this world, but he was not one to be somber all the time. There is no verse in the Bible that says Jesus laughed, but we know that he emphasized, empathized excuse me, with us completely and felt all of our emotions and laughter. Laughter is part of life. And of course, Jesus truly lived. I was a pastor of a small church in, in a rural community. This is not a true story. Wilbur and his wife, Leah, attended every Sunday morning. Wilbur was a farmer. And whenever he came into his house from the field and sat down, well, he would fall asleep. No farmers here have ever done that, right? I see farmers' wives smiling. It was such a habit that when he came into church and sat down on the pew, he would also soon fall asleep. I discovered that some members of the church were taking bets on how long I could keep Wilbur awake on Sunday mornings. Wilbur's wife was embarrassed by his behavior, especially when he began to snore. She tried everything to keep her sleepy spouse awake. She complained to him that she was getting calluses on her elbow from poking him in the ribs in a futile effort to keep him alert. One day, while grocery shopping, she saw a small bottle of Limburger cheese. Leah bought it and dropped it into her purse. The next Sunday morning, I had just started the sermon when Wilbur began to nod. When I finished the first point in my three-point sermon, I, 
could see I was losing him. As I started the third point, Wilbur began to snore. Quietly, Leah opened her purse, took out the Limburger cheese, and held it under her husband's nose. It worked. Wilbur sat up straight, and in a voice that could be heard all over the church said, Leah, will you please keep your feet on your side of the bed? <laughs> what do you think? Would Jesus have laughed that Sunday? Well, we did. Even though we know that Jesus was never recorded as laughing, doesn't mean that he didn't. It doesn't say that he took a bath, washed his face, changed his clothes, or combed his hair. But we know he would, he would have done all of those things. If he didn't, we really need to think about the deep psychological problems we are putting on our Savior. One of the blessings of being in this church is that we do laugh. We laugh on even the Sundays that aren't holy humor. We laugh at ourselves, we laugh at each other, and we especially laugh at the pastor. Some have the idea that a sincerely religious person would always be serious. In one school, the seminary students were told, to be a bishop, you need gray hair to give you the dis that distinguished look, and hemorrhoids to give you that look of sorrow. But great religious leaders, including Billy Graham, the Pope, C.S. Lewis, and Mother Teresa, all knew that much of life takes laughter. Jesus' conclusion is clear. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, Matthew 5, 12. In fact, Luke tells, lets us know that much about Jesus is, is about a party. At the end of almost every parable, there is a party. The wedding at Cana, the prodigal son, the great supper, the lost coin, that leavened bread thing. You know, if you have a big bunch of uh, flour and you put leaven in it, you've got to use it now. There's going to be a party. And in regard to, those, to other parables, Jesus also has a keen sense of humor. Our problem is that we tend to take everything he said so seriously that we miss the humor. The parables usually have kind of one of those O. Henry surprise endings that would have left people chuckling. He loved to use the ridiculous to make his point. Does anybody here remember taking a three-year-old to church? If you don't remember, ask Sandra or Sheila, Sandra and Ryan and Sheila. Well, there's a unique thing that happens to a three-year-old at church. They lose their bones. You go to grab them and they are like a greased eel or seal or whatever. They just have, bleh. you know, they, you try to get them to do something and, and, and they're right. Am I right? You cannot get them to sit still. Well, I've had a three-year-old or two, five. Anyhow, my middle daughter, Sarah, we always had this thing of one, two, three. First time warning, second time warning, third time warning, you're out. And we're at church. And she's misbehaving. And I've given her the first warning. And I've given her a stern second warning. And it's the third warning. So I grab her up, throw her over my shoulder. And as I'm about to clear the door, taking her outside, for what she knows will not be nice, she goes, Pray for me, y'all. <laughs> pretty hard, pretty hard to discipline a child when they do that. So I think Jesus laughed that day, too. I have never been bothered by children being children in a service. At Burr Oak, in a very small church, we had a three-year-old whose older sister was in dance. So every time the piano played a hymn, she would dance, trying to emulate her sister. And of course, I was asked, isn't that a little distracting? Well, you know, there are whole congregations who pay good money for interpretive dancing in their midst. Well, we had Kendall. And I think Jesus got a good smile out of Kendall's idea of dancing to Lord of the Dance. This vessel we call church was never meant to be so rigid and so full of pomp 
and procedure that we fail to see the blessedness of the gift of being together. Jesus was no gloomy Messiah. His standard greeting to his disciples was rejoice. So let's smile, grin, and laugh. Jesus would like that. Amen. And I like the idea that I get to have somebody pull another. Oh, I'm going to get Roger. He looks like he needs a good laugh. Anybody got a joke? Now's your time. That's the wrong side. It's the children's message. Come on, children. Do we have children? Okay, boys, do we know any jokes? Go. Oh, hang on. Knock, knock. Who's there? Alex. I'll explain later. Let me in. Ah, very good. Very good. Anybody else have a joke? Garrett's singing, huh? Anybody else? Anybody else? Knock, knock. Banana. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Banana. Knock, knock. Banana. Knock, knock. Orange. Orange, you glad I didn't say banana? I think knock-knock jokes are the very first jokes that we begin to tell. And I remember raising boys, and they would come home with a knock-knock joke, or what they thought was a knock-knock joke, and there was no joke in it. But we all laughed, because it is, it is in raising children that we realize that life is fun. Do you guys know that you probably did funny things as a child? Do you think that you might still do funny things as a child? I think you do. And I think that that is a blessing that children get, or that parents get, because they get to see the humor in you all. And um, have, you ever, have you ever done anything that's embarrassed you? Oh, you have? those little hole thingies yet? What are they? I don't know what those are. They are things that I think of and and I mommy says you can't have communion. <gasps> Why are we not having communion? Oh next Sunday be here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh that was sweet. See? We got some, some joy out of that. You guys are just natural comedians, I can tell. Okay. Well, I believe, as you heard, that Jesus liked to laugh too. So don't always take yourself too seriously, right? Right. And have fun in this life that you have been given. And these people out here, they'll help you. All right? Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for our children. Uh, they remind us that, that there is so much life in living and so much joy in living. And how that you called children to you because you knew that there was some pureness and some wholeness in them that we as adults lose. So help us, Lord, to be your children, 
and to be whole and pure in your eyes. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And they all said, amen. Who here is the oldest? It's time to take up our offering. All right. If you guys will, um, we're going to have do an offering with an offertory. So prepare yourselves for offering. Oh, I know it's hard to decide. You only get one. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can have two. All right. We gotta wait. Does anybody got a joke? Wait, uh, uh, Thelma has another joke. Okay, get get her a mic. Somebody. All right. I'm full of them. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, you know, when you go to the hospital, they have all these rules and regulations. Okay, this nurse was taking the wheelchair up to a room, and she looked in the room, and there was this man sitting there, fully dressed, with his suitcase. And so she said, okay, you need to get in my wheelchair so I can take you to the door. Well... I don't think so, he said. Yes, she said, you have to. Okay, he got in the wheelchair. And as they were going down the hall, the nurse said, uh, now will your wife be at the door to meet us? Well, he said, the last I saw of her, she was in the bathroom getting changed into her clothes so we could go home. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Keep them coming.
Lord, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity to put on your, your armor of laughter today. The thing that wards off all the feelings that the world brings on us. And Lord, I ask that you would, would bless this offering. This offering with that tone of joy. That it would not just be joy for the offering, but joy for the giver as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Steve, we got another one that we got to pull. So I get to, anybody got a joke? If not, we're just going to hand some of, oh, we have, a, we have somebody with a joke. Hallelujah. Yeah, I guess this is on. Uh, the old cowboy out west, he went to church one Sunday, and he was the only one there beside the minister. And the minister got up there and he damned the devil and beat on the pulpit and had a big sermon. And when he got done, he asked the uh, cowboy, he said, what do you think of my sermon? He said, well, I think it was pretty good. But he says, you know, I've fed cows all my life. And at feeding time, when I call them to come, and only one cow shows up, I don't give them the whole load. <laughs> What are you trying to tell me here? <laughs> All right. Our next thing is I have decided to follow Jesus. Uh, 2129 in the faith we sing or up on the screen. Four twenty. You can stay seated. We, I don't want you to feel like jumping jacks here. Four twenty.
brushes picking out? The Lord's Prayer. I think we all know that one, right? <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. going to be my next lucky person. Well, the person who's going to watch my dog when I'm away. Salter. We're going to hear from Steve. He's probably thought, why am I up here, window dressing? Salter reading this morning is Psalm 150. I'll read the little words, you read the big words. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty firmament. Praise God for his mighty deeds. Praise God for his exceeding greatness. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. This here's your part, Pastor. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipes. Praise God with sounding cymbals. Praise God with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything breathe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Well, I should have been down here. Hmm. Who's going to be my next person? I think Mr. Hopkins, you need to do it. Oh, oh okay. All right. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. One thing I can think of is the story of Jerusalem reminded me. I used to travel a lot, and I was invited to Israel by the government of Israel. And we went all over Jerusalem and everywhere in the Holy Lands. And one evening they said, tomorrow morning we're going to the, take you to the Wailing Wall. I said, that would be great. So the next morning we're... Got to the Wailing Wall standing around. It wasn't more than 10 minutes, and I looked around, and I felt like a complete moron standing there with my harpoon. <laughs> <laughs> the other night, though, laying in bed, this probably happens to a lot of you, I th was thinking a lot about what ifs. I thought, well, what if, what if I die? What if I go to heaven? What if? What if I meet God? And what if God sneezes? What am I going to say? Oh, a conundrum. <laughs> there probably has never been a bigger conundrum than that. Amen? All right. Well, what did I know you were so busy with your one-liners that you, um, it says to please turn toward the center and sing what would be on the screen Till we meet again. You're standing again.
Scripture this morning is John 20, 19 through 31. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wound left by the nail, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miracles, miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this record. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So in closing, happy are those who have not seen but still believe. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks for putting up with this service.